What are some ridiculous history facts? Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, was present at three different presidential assassinations. After McKinley, he decided not to accept any more invitations. In 1895, the entire state of Ohio had only two cars, both cars managed to still smash into each other. The first known political cartoon is Egyptian, and shows Hatshepsut, the only woman pharaoh, pegging her lover and chief architect Senmut. Former US President Andrew Jackson was approached by a man who pulled a gun on him. Smaller history fact this was the first assassination attempt on a US president. The man pulled the trigger and the cap went off but the gunpowder failed to light. The man pulled a second gun and fired, but the gunpowder again failed to light. The assassin tried to get away, but not before Andrew Jackson got him and beat the shit out of him with a cane. Karl Marx's great-great-grandson has a YouTube video of him doing parkour, called exclamation marks. The entire country of Malta was awarded the George Cross for its efforts in World War II. It's still on their flag. Potatoes were not very popular as a food in France, like they were seen as fit only for animals. Not only that but they were considered generally not digestible by humans. So a pharmacist named Parmentier knew they were good food and wanted to popularize them among the working class. So he got a two-acre farm to grow potatoes and placed armed guards around it at all times. People assumed armed guards meant something very valuable was growing there so they began to steal the potatoes. That's how potatoes became popular in France's working class. He also told his guards to accept bribes and to not actually catch anyone. Man that seems like such a good job. Your job is to guard this area, but don't actually guard it, just look like you are. It's like me right this second using Reddit while at work. People know no different than it looks like I'm looking up important information. I am not. During the Cold War, there was an idea to drop XL condoms labeled medium onto the Soviets to make them think we were anatomically superior and be more afraid of fighting us. Easily my favorite part of American history. Whoops I dropped my monster condom for my magnum dong. General Omar Bradley was stopped by MP during the Battle of the Bulge in World War II due to them thinking he was a Nazi infiltrator. The irony was that he was stopped because he correctly identified the capital of Illinois as Springfield when the officer thought it was Chicago. I've met plenty of people who thought Chicago was the capital of Illinois just because it's our most populated city. Montenegro technically was in war with Japan for 101 years and they signed a peace treaty in 2006. Montenegro was aligned with Russia and Russo-Japanese war and they declared war on Japan but they forgot to peace. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the world after the price of Russian vodka couldn't cover their deal for Pepsi products, so they traded 17 submarines, a frigate, a cruiser, and a destroyer for a trade deal. Fun fact. The president of Pepsi Company at the time told the National Security Advisor we are disarming the USSR faster than you are. Hitler, Stalin, Trotsky, Freud, and Tito were all living in the same area of Vienna in 1913. In 1967 Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt disappeared while swimming in the ocean. He was presumed drowned, so naturally that year we named a swim center after him in memoriam. Edit, added his name which I meant to do when I wrote the post but obviously my brain snapped midway through the sentence and I forgot it. Henry Cavendish, the man who was vital in the discovery of gases and discovered hydrogen. He inherited a ton of money from his uncle, and built a special castle, I think. He was incredibly introverted, so it was designed so that he never had to meet or see any of his servants. He communicated with them through notes only. He did, however, appreciate other scientists coming to visit and talk. His works mostly came after his death of course, but I found this guy interesting. Once FDR died, Truman didn't know about the Manhattan Project, but when he found out he subtly tried to tell Stalin they were working on something big. Stalin was like yeah dude, I knew before you did, since he had so many spies in America. American military members were also killed during the nuclear bombings of Japan. When American High Command was informed of their presence their response was something like, targets remain unchanged, nearly 800 Americans died training for D-Day. During the Viking era, there was a leader named Sigurd, he allied with a Viking warlord named Thorstein, he wanted to conquer more land and expand his territory. He had already been very successful in doing so. This was until he feuded with another leader called Mal Bucktooth or Mal Tusk, as his front two teeth were abnormally large and bucktoothed. They decided to settle their matters on the battlefield and both agreed on bringing 40 men each for the battle. However, Sigurd ignored the terms and brought 80 men. 
Bucktooth had realized he had been betrayed but did not give up. They killed a number of Sigurd's men, but alas, they were overpowered and were all killed. Here's the catch, after the battle, Sigurd ordered his men to behead all the enemies and tie them to their saddles as trophies. However, as Sigurd rode home in victory, the severed head of Bucktooth pierced his leg, which lead to an infection, killing him soon after. In ancient Egypt, servants were smeared with honey to attract flies away from the pharaoh. There used to be bread stamps, burned into a cooked loaf of bread, to avoid bread fraud, as the government supplied the wheat slash flour, but some bakers tried to use sawdust and other ingredients in the bread to make the wheat last longer. The bread stamps were baker specific, so they could track down where any tainted bread came from. If they were caught, they had to move to another town to make bread, or wait three years to continue making bread if I remember correctly. Bread laws were huge throughout most of history, Nowadays, the idea of the government so strictly regulating an industry that they are forced to sell at a certain price seems odd, but in a time when food shortages were always a danger and food reserves were slim, bread becomes a very important commodity. It's how the Roman emperors kept Rome quiet despite the fact it was such an absurdly huge city, literally bread and circuses. Free bread, free water, and free entertainment. Colombia has a period in history literally called the Dumb Homeland period because of how incredibly dumb politicians acted at the time. Herostratus is the guy who burned down the Temple of Artemis. The only reason he did it was to have his name written down in history. A law was also passed that made it illegal to write down his name for just that reason. Obviously, it is not enforced in modern times. That's where you're wrong, bucko. You're going to jail. Before Abraham Lincoln became a politician, he was a champion wrestler, with more than 300 bouts under his belt, Lincoln only lost one match in his career and was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1992. He also jumped out of a window in order to prevent a quorum, defenestrated himself. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. We have new videos every day. Here's a meme for you to enjoy. At one time there was not only a pope and an anti-pope but also a counter anti-pope. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams died on the same day, July 4, 1826, the 50th anniversary of them both signing the Declaration of Independence. Adams's last words were, Thomas Jefferson survives, he was wrong by about five hours. The first bomb dropped on Berlin by the British during World War II claimed no human casualties, but it did kill an elephant. Never forget. The Battle of Bull Run, during the American Civil War, was called the Picnic Battle, because so many civilians from Washington went on picnics on the sidelines and watched. But once the battle actually started, and the Union started to get its ass kicked, they all ran away, running over injured soldiers and dead bodies and generally disrupting the battle. This was actually a relatively common thing during the Civil War, I know it happened at Gettysburg too. Fucking tourist. War tourism is big business. Claudius Drusus died in AD 20 from asphyxiation when he tossed a pear in the air and caught it in his mouth. The pear tree was put on trial, found guilty of murder, and destroyed. Two important questions. 1. How large was this man's throat? 2. How small was this pear? It might not be true. Suetonius tells us this story and he lived more than 50 years after Claudius Drusus died. It's also totally possible that he was actually murdered by a man named Sianus who was a pretty notorious figure in the early empire. We will probably never know what really happened to him. A lot of high-profile deaths surrounding the royal family, for lack of a better term, from around this time that have wacky stories behind them or at least there are suspicions and there were suspicions at the time that their deaths weren't entirely natural. Heirs to the throne under Augustus and Tiberius had a habit of dying young. When the Romans laid siege to Themyscira, a real place weirdly enough, they attempted to tunnel into the city. The Themyscirans released bears into the tunnels. Ancient Greek and Roman marble statues were actually originally painted and were colorful. A lot of the statues paint faded away and went away over time. Some people cleaned off the paint thinking it was debris or dirt, and other people just plain cleaned and removed all of the paint off of them because they preferred the look of white marble. Rome was actually a very colorful city and it wasn't all made of just boring plain white marble. I'm taking a course in classical archaeology and it's almost painful to sit through the my professor discuss what the early archaeologists did. How about that paleontologist who blew up an entire dig site just to prevent his rival from excavating it? 
When Alexander the Great was a child he was reprimanded by a teacher for wastefully throwing two whole fistfuls of rare incense into a sacrificial fire. When he was an adult and captured Gaza, which happened to be the prime agricultural source of the incense he wasted, he sent home 18 tons of it home to the same teacher as a gift. There are literally entire books of anecdotes of this sort on Ben Franklin. That man was the OG of trolling. He was so good at trolling under the pen name of a female, silence do good, he received several marriage proposals, only then did he reveal her true identity. Original Catfish The Massachusetts colony banned celebrating Christmas. During that time period many people used it as an excuse to get hammered and party. Another tradition was that the young adults would cross-dress then go door to door singing songs and demanding food. This clearly doesn't fit with Puritan lifestyle, so the governor banned public celebrations. People could still celebrate it in their homes if they didn't get too rowdy. I think it was unbanned when Massachusetts became a state, but didn't become mainstream until Christmas became a national holiday. Nashville briefly legalized prostitution during the Civil War. Union soldiers stationed there kept getting syphilis, so the no prostitutes were put on a large barge in the river. I'm a little fuzzy on what happened after that, but no it didn't work very well. So it was legalized and prostitutes had to be registered or get a license, I can't remember which, and we're required to have STD checks. This lowered the amount of prostitutes with syphilis because it was getting caught and treated. That lowered the amount of soldiers getting syphilis and made the army happy. It was outlawed shortly after the war ended though. I love how they stumble onto one of the biggest bonuses of legal prostitution but then just revert right back to the previous system even though they knew it didn't work. Pythagoras drowned a student to death because the student proved the existence of irrational numbers which contradicted Pythagoras and his cults, the Brotherhood, beliefs. Well fuck his stupid theorem then, his theorem can be derived from Ptolemy's theorem, so his is inferior. As St. Lawrence was roasted to death on a gridiron, he is said to have remarked to his torturers, I am cooked on this side, turn me over, St. Lawrence is the patron saint of cooks and comedians. The shortest war occurred between Zanzibar and the British Empire, lasting around 45 minutes. Both the British and the Zanzibar Sultanate fielded a couple thousand men with a few boats, However the war ended with a single Brit wounded, meanwhile the Zanzibarians suffered 500 dead or wounded, including civilians, and their entire navy, a yacht, two boats and a shore battery, gone. What? That is some serious superior firepower there. 1927 Liberian elections were referred to as the most rigged ever by Francis Johnson Morris, a modern head of the country's National Elections Commission, and also made it into the Guinness Book of Records as the most fraudulent election ever reported in history, as despite there being fewer than 15,000 registered voters, King received around 243,000 votes, compared to 9,000 for Faulkner. The death of Cato, he killed himself by ripping out his internal organs one by one, when he passed out, the Roman doctors sewed his wounds shut, but for just a few seconds, he woke back up and tore the organs out again. The British once sent a guy to China as a spy so he would uncover the secrets of making tea. The British did as they pleased back in the day. When the Netherlands was occupied by Ray Nazis in 1940 many people fled to Canada, including Princess Juliana of the Netherlands and her husband Prince Bernard of Lippe by Esterfeld, their daughter, Princess Marguerite was born in Ottawa, not knowing if the baby would be male, and hence the heir to the throne, Canada declared the maternity ward of the Ottawa Hospital extraterritorial, which means it became international territory. This meant that the baby would derive its nationality only from its mother, making it 100% Dutch. It is told, by Herodotus, that when Xerxes invaded Greece he had to build pontoon bridges, which were destroyed by a storm before completion. Xerxes was so upset at what happened that he had every engineer beheaded and sent soldiers down to whip the sea 300 times for its failure to obey him and comply with his plans. I think Dan Carlin talks about this on Hardcore History. If I remember correctly they branded it with hot irons, and threw shackles into it as well. Supposedly they also shit-talked the water calling it briny and turbid while they beat it. 